you want real reality, just go take your camera and record what's going on at Walmart. <laughs> and then follow that follow that husband and wife home to their house with their kids and then record them once yeah. they get home from Walmart. Then you're going to see, ah, shut, shut your goddamn ass down. <laughs> <laughs> That's reality TV. Just take the camera see. home. For holiday, yeah. you got Thanksgiving and Christmas coming Ooh. up. Go, go record yeah. that. Go record that. <laughs> Go record that. So I made the move. I bumped her, but I played it cool. DJ dropped Beyonce. I asked her who she catered to. She said, I'm single, boo. I just hope you single too. Uh, but I ain't tripping. I'm just out having a drink or two. Welcome to another Degree Single segment, and thank you for listening. I've always began my earlier segments by explaining the concepts, but I don't feel like I need to keep doing that anymore. So please check out my earlier segments and stay tuned for this one to see what Degree Single Segments are all about. And I'm going to jump right in with today's guest. Y'all know by now that every guest is historic, let me tell it. So today's guest has got to be one of the first guys I met when I first attended Alcorn during the summer before my freshman year. He was a large part of my first year at Alcorn and a lot of things about him especially his sense of humor has stuck with me over the years. So everybody welcome Shannon Edwards. Thank you, Shannon, for being on and tell everyone a little bit about yourself. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Shannon Edwards. I'm from Gretna, Louisiana. A lot of people don't know where that's at, but it's I right, ac <laughs> right across the bridge from New Orleans. <laughs> Actually, you can see downtown New Orleans from my mom's house. And I graduated from Alcorn State University. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Brave nation. Mm -hmm. And I don't care about a lot of things. <laughs> but I care about enough. <laughs> my motto is if it's not uh, about my bank account or the well-being of my friends and family, it's a joke. So everything else is a joke. <laughs> what you think about that i actually think that's good and i think a lot of us need to be like that about a lot of things but hey a lot of us are not blessed to be that carefree so i don't know maybe you can drop you know some gems give us some tips on how to be that way in our own personal lives uh i really do think it will make the world a, a much better place maybe cancel culture could go away if a lot of us had that idea about that yeah it's easy to do you just don't worry about nothing else other than that it's hard it's not, not to worry. it's not serious though it's not it's not well it might be because everybody everybody don't look at things the same way that i do true so i don't know maybe you gonna, have to like share us share with us your philosophy or how you like came to be like that way because you know a lot of people we take stuff to heart we hope well it's probably like what, uh, like my dad growing up, it was always like, if it's anything material, you can sell it, make a profit. So never fall in love with it. So anything you get, it just could be gone the next day. So don't never stress on anything material that you get. Because you can always sell it or it's going to be gone. That's one thing. And my mom is a real, like, big on finances and saving and making sure the family stick together. So I had that, both sides coming in, and it just made me, which is a person who really don't worry about nothing other than well-being of my family and friends. In my bank account. Everything else is a joke. So <laughs> if somebody say if somebody say something about something like anything that don't have nothing to do with those two things, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make a joke about it. Oh, I know <laughs> oh, I you're good for that. <laughs> oh, I don't care about it. Either that, either either or. So with that being said, I just I just live like that. It's not really a, a philosophy. It just it's just the way I go about life. There's no special, no special uh, tactics to doing it. I just do it. I just do it. Like you can, you you can um, 
Remember when we was in school, I did not get a haircut for five years. Really? Now, I ain't know that now. How, how would I know that? Well, you, because you seen my hair. I knew you had, what well, you had locks, right? When we was in yeah, school? but I didn't get them. I got forced to get them twisted one time. But other than that, I never got them retwisted. I never got a line up. None of that. I just let my hair grow because I didn't care. I was like, why would I spend $15 to go to the barbershop? I don't give a fuck about none of these people out here <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like, what? what is it going to bring me by making sure I get a haircut every day? I'm trying. I came out here to go to school. I already came out here to go to school because I was trying to get away from some stuff. So it didn't really matter. My haircut wasn't, it didn't have no effect on my bank account or the well-being of my friends and family. So I just didn't even get a haircut for five years. Wow. I really do love that. I just like everything, just like your whole energy and everything you was just describing. It just seemed just so lighthearted, so carefree, but still like so real. And that's, it seems like a very good way to navigate life because a lot of us are just weighed down by a lot of stuff. Because like just even the hair, I, mean, I be trying to tell people like as a woman, you know, weaved up all that kind of stuff. I think when you first met me, I was like combing my hair. I, I was like wearing my hair like in these ponytails and stuff because you know we was training and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that. And then I think I had like braids, but then I got on one. I lost the braids, and from there I've been like weaved up ever since. And it's like all this hair stuff, like what we put into it, but then also people's like criticism of it. It's deep. It's like so heavy. And you would like to think that it's not before a lot of people. It is. It's like a huge major part of life, your self-esteem, the way you perceive yourself, the way you think other people perceive you. But for you to be like five years, I don't, I don't care about none of it. Don't. And let me tell you, that's the only reason why a lot of people go through that because they're worried about other people. Because people say they do it for themselves, but they really don't. Because if you was doing it for yourself, when you be in your house by yourself, you had that hair any kind of way you want. <laughs> That's I so know true. It. I know it. You might take it, you might plait it in on one <laughs> side, it be sticking up this way, that way. But guess what? That you walk through the mirror, you just be like, pump, nothing. You don't even care about it. It's when you gotta go around somebody else. That's when you're gonna be like, I need to do something with this because you're worried about them. They don't know what's going on in your life. They don't know your time schedule. They don't know none of that. And just because you have your head the way you have it, that don't make no kind of judgment on what type of person you are. It shouldn't. But it does not to me. Because me personally, I don't care about that shit. I just look at like matter of fact, like a a, a black woman. I don't care if I have short, long, in between, straight, curly. What they call nappy, which is all, I like it all, a fade, whatever she got. Mm -hmm. She can have a straight up Shaquille O'Neal ball head. <laughs> if she a beautiful black woman, she beautiful. Yeah. It does not bother me. I don't look at it like that, but some people do. Mm. Be like, oh, the shrinkage is real. <laughs> I ain't worried about no shrinkage, man. Because it is real. Well, I guess the more people... Well, I, it's, it, I understand that, but I'm just saying, me, I don't look at that. I don't worry about that. That doesn't, that doesn't, like, that's not one of the things um that I look at and be like, this girl, yeah, look at her hair. She need to get some weave. Huh? <laughs> I personally never, ever purchased weave a day in my life. I know it's coming from a man, but you know how people be out here and they be buying that. Mm -hmm. I don't buy that. Mm -hmm. Not at all. So if a lady Not is like, Shannon, I want this new hair for my birthday. You like dating this woman, y'all together. And she's like, I want this new hair for my birthday. You ain't going to get it. Ah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. So if you feel that way, so do you feel that way about like all things physical or just hair? Like if you if you're that carefree about, like, I don't care what a head look like. So does, is that kind of like how you no. are about everything? Like what attracts you to a person then in that case? To a woman? What yeah. attracts me to a woman? 
first of all, I love black women. Thank you. First of all. Love you too. So that attracts me first. And then it's like conversation since, oh, ankle bracelets. <laughs> but what? <laughs> ankle bracelets. <laughs> yes. What? So you just be walking around like with other people looking at women's hair, they body, you looking at their ankles. I've been like, yeah. <laughs> just look at the ankles. Man, like, ooh, man. What does yep. the ankle bracelet? What does that say to you? Like, God, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It'd be like, <laughs> follow me home. <laughs> It'd be talking to me. Saying it, and then my- especially if they got, the, especially if they got the right kind of ankle. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. It just, it, I can't explain it. It just the ankle bracelet fit perfect. <laughs> It ain't too big, but it ain't too tight. Like we're it ain't, yeah, yeah. It ain't you know. I don't know. It's a certain hey. kind of beads that the ankle bracelet need to have. You know. Actually, it it, it got to be gold or silver. Mm. I don't know. That just might be my thing. But it, gold or silver, yeah. And I see an ankle bracelet, I'll be like, oh, I look at that first, and then I start seeing everything else. I need to start selling ankle bracelets after this episode drop. Hey, like, oh. if you selling the ankle bracelets, shit, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some. Because <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a relationship right now. I've been in for like, um, mm, since 2013. Wow. And I'll put, a, I'll put a new ankle bracelet on there. <laughs> Look, was she wearing an ankle bracelet when you when you met her? No, nah, she wasn't. But let me tell you what got me. She ain't never had a weave on, mm-hmm. like never. And she used to always have a little hand, a little nice. She used to style it up all nice and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I used to be like, oh, she... yeah, ah. that's what got me. So for you to be so, I guess, impartial to hair, you don't care. You just don't care. But the fact that she didn't ever have weed, but also always kept her hair styled. Okay. It was like, um, it was like the way that she did it was like, you could just take it and brush it. And like, she'll put it in like a, a French twist, but it was all like natural. It wasn't permed or nothing. So I don't know. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, oh, don't take care of yourself, but you don't have to add anything to what you already have. That's what I mean by that. What you already have is beautiful enough. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful enough. That's what you, that's what you were born with. So if you changing what you were born with, you, you like, like really sometimes to me, I feel like you're taking away from what you already have. I would actually agree with that. And I tell people all the time, like everybody knows, I'm sitting here with, with a whole wig on right now. But I tell that's, people... That's fine. That's what you want to do, but that's just not my thing. Right. So, well, no, I'm, I'm saying, like, speaking of what you're saying, like, you don't need to add to it, like, as good as it is, because I do feel like I get a better response. For one, when I'm not wearing this, when I have, like, my natural hair down and I'm out and about, one, people think I'm younger. And two, if I'm posting, like, stories or pictures or something with my natural hair, it usually gets more of a response from men. It is not that yeah. I don't care what they think, but I know the kind of work that goes into it because, you know. Oh, I know. I, I know. I know that it's probably harder to take care of and with a day to day schedule. Like, and the thing about it is, I feel like the society makes it to where it's harder for you to take care of it because if you could just go back and like do like simple styles like they used to do back in the day. When the women just was like, oh, I'm going to throw it in pin curls mm-hmm. and just, and I got to go to work. Um, cool. Nobody wasn't tripping on that. But see, nowadays in, in, in this society that's where these, I say these white people, they like, they look at all of that because they'll tell a man that, oh, a black man that their hair can't be over an inch long or a half inch long on the head. 
you got to cut that. But these white guys come to work and they got their shit all slicked back and curl in the mm-hmm. back, little flip up, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what's the difference? <laughs> but I think that's why it makes it so hard on a black woman because they're looking at that. These white people looking at that. Yes. At your job. So they look at it and they say, well, I can't. I can't. I, I, we don't like that. And they're constantly and scrutinizing it. They got all these rules and laws. Like, it's just a message. You got to have, like, rules uh, and laws. About hair, which is like, what do you want me to do? It grows like this on its own. Literally. Literally. Like, what do you want me to do? Yes. This is how it grows. Yeah, so I think I, I had agree. nothing nothing to do with my genetics when I was born. It was just death. I came out, I said, wah, and that's it. <laughs> you said you know what? what <laughs> and I'm here. <laughs> Why I did I know this talk was going to go like this? You funny, man. Uh, <laughs> but that's all. I can't, you can't, you can't do that. But I feel like that puts a lot of pressure on a black woman because they feel like they like every, I don't think they feel like it's like they have to sit there and try to do this to their hair every day, every day, every day, try to fix it. So they look at it it's like, oh, it's an easy way out. And it's it's a more carefree. So I could just put it, put it in. I, it'll last me so much time. Once it gets towards the end, I could just put it in a little ponytail. If I want to go out, I could throw a little hat on. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot easier, but if these people, if they wasn't putting this type of pressure on them, they wouldn't even worry. You could just comb it out and you could probably like get your couple twists in there mm-hmm. and just roll out, do your job. And then when you feel like you're ready to do something and spruce yourself up, and you could do that, but you ain't got to worry about it every day like that. That's right. And, and it's too much. It's a lot of pressure. It is. And then it's, it, that social media is in, I think, <laughs> I think it's just started from the uh, the Real Housewives. Uh. And, and, and then it moved on to <laughs> love and hip hop with the, with the social media all together at one time that just put this big old thing, like this big old weight on a lot of black women's shoulders, thinking that this is how they got to live on their day to day. Man, they got people out here that don't even pay their bills because they want to get their they shit straight. Yes. Now I go like, They will not pay. They were like, man, I'm going to pay that shit later. I got to get this hair. These bundles costing me three something a piece. Mm-mm. And, you know, they'll go get these expenses. I'm going to stop. <laughs> no, but it's true. Like, what you're saying they is get, it's true. Yeah, and I don't I don't feel like that's me personally. I can't speak for every man in the world, but I don't feel like it's necessary for them to to do all that to feel accepted because really men are not like that. They don't care about all of that. They really don't. You might put it like this. A man do not know what a good dress look like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't. You could do it. You could do the. You could do the, the the test and everything on your own. You could get a bunch of dresses, all similar, and cut the tags off of them, and see if they could grab a dress and say, "Oh, this is a nice dress." This mm-hmm. is, nah. They don't know. It's all about the purse. That twenty dollar dress. Could probably get you the same man that this person who had this twelve hundred dollar dress on was trying to get and couldn't get him. Now I definitely believe you on that because they don't be knowing. Yeah, the hair they don't know if your hair is five hundred dollars a bundle or twenty dollars from the gas station. <laughs> they don't. They don't know. They don't know. And if they do know, <laughs> <laughs> look why you know that's crazy though because like and, and I agree with they, you. Like, they, they, they might they might be a beautician or something. Yeah, I don't know. You know we got you know, know men they they laying yeah. here doing weeds all that kind of stuff now. Yeah, I'm and I don't I don't I don't 
I don't go against that shit. Before um before Katrina, I was about to get into this that. vehicle is connected by OnStar to limited services. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that was. <laughs> but before um before Katrina hit the day it hit on Sunday night, I think. I was supposed to start school on that Monday mm. to go into uh I was gonna start barber school first and then I was gonna go to cosmo- t- cosmetology school just cause because I felt like I could get a lot of customers just the way I talk and yeah. With your personality, I, everything, I think you really And if do. I do it, if I did a good job, I'm like, man, if I do a good job and I do this and I give them a little glass of wine. Oh, I just throw that all have my up. money if you did a good job. Hey, yeah, you do a good job. You, so I'm not saying nothing about that because I was about to do that, too. And she could train the hit and sit my ass all the way to Arizona. Yeah. Arizona, but no, I think everything you said about the hair is dope. I think the only drawback is like, I'm hearing everything you're saying. I think it's wonderful, but then you have like guys that'll turn around and be like, so when women are natural, they completely natural self. I, and I, it's something that's been said before, and we don't have to spend too much time on it, but it's like people say they want natural, but then everybody doesn't express what you have expressed because you seem to be pretty welcoming and appreciative of all naturals. But some people I not take all of them. They, they they think they are. They like to say that to criticize what we're doing. But then we know like natural is like a spectrum, right? And everybody natural don't look the same. And so you, then you no. have some people that are natural and then they be like, man, you need to do something with that nappy stuff. That's ugly. Or y'all here like some broccoli and all that type of stupid stuff. And I'm like, you know, mm-mm. that's not the type of person you're trying to get. True. That's not the type of person because the type of person that gonna sit there and say that they're not comfortable with themselves. Yes, they're not comfortable with themselves. So that means everything they're doing to themselves, they're trying to hide themselves. For what? I feel you on don't that. Hide. I think a lot of men don't realize. A lot of black men is like if they weren't, if it wasn't for haircuts, they hair would be looking just like ours. It's just men traditionally cut their hair. Women don't. So it's like, we got the same kind of hair, bro. <laughs> so if some men cut their hair, they hair be looking like ours. Same crazy kind. because my brother, he was he was dealing with his hair. His hair like grew out a bit. And he was using like head and shoulders. You know, men to be grabbing stuff and just yeah. using it. And he was like, his hair know. just wasn't responding the way it needed to. And I'm like, bro, you my brother. We got the same mama, same dad. It's more than likely we got the same kind of hair. Go under the sink. Get my shea moisture and all my mama natural. Yeah, I'm natural. Our other sister natural. All of us in the house. Like, go under the sink and use our stuff. He like, yeah. man, I use yeah, no, no shower. He like, man, I use this stuff in the shower. It's just like night and day. My hair was like, it's yeah. totally different. I'm like, duh. <laughs> like, we got the same hair. We the same. Like, but if it wasn't for you, I'm your glad hair, you I'm said like, that too, because I could use I could use head and shoulders, and it's supposed to be a dandruff shampoo. My shit gonna be flaky as fuck. Yeah. Look like I pour grits in my head. <laughs> Go you look look at what your girl used. And you oh, no, that's what I use. That's yeah. what I use. That's what I use. I'm straight. I'm straight. And I um I use those drops from uh Welty. Mm-hmm. Oh, I okay. Those, yeah, I yeah, I put I that online. Yeah, I use her stuff and I use it for my daughter too. My daughter put it in her head too. Mm-hmm. And and my girl uses it too. So yeah. I do. I actually got to order some more. I got to order some more. That's dope. I'm running low. Well, seeing her drops, look plug. Yeah, look yeah, it yeah. Up, Go get it if I find it. I'll link it here. But yeah, it's like when I hear black men. Yeah, do it, do it. Like, put, please link it there because it really, it really keeps your hair moisturized. Mm-hmm. Like I could put it in there on Monday. I won't have to reapply it. To and shit, my hair is low. I just got a low uh-huh. cut. I'm gonna have to turn my light on soon. You probably can't see me. It's getting dark. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I use it. I got a low haircut, but I still use it. And it keeps my hair moisturized for, like, shoot, about five days. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I never tried that, but now that you mentioned that, I'm going to have to go look it up. So yeah, I tried, it. man. But, yeah, it's like black, black men and black women, we got the same stuff. And it's like, when we when we get into a superficial mess like that, I'll be like, okay, you, you clearly don't know. If your hair grew past an inch, you would be having the same old questions and struggles that we would have. So that's that. 
So it's crazy. This conversation really took off right off jump. But I, think, I feel like I feel like I feel like all of our hair is beautiful. You just gotta you gotta embrace it. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. Know what to do with it. Man, you could take a you could man, you could take a, a black woman with a little small afro and just take a flower and stick it in the side. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. She looks wonderful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Right. But I guess you gotta have that type of like perception of beauty though, because everybody don't people be thinking they do, but they really don't. They be claiming we don't gotta do all that when you show up somebody I do. just like that. It's like, I don't know, I ain't feeling all that. Yeah, not me. Yeah. Not me. Well, that's why I'm glad we having this segment because hopefully this message will get out to the I community. give everybody their props. Yeah. Everybody. They got to. And we need more of that. So so like I said, this conversation just really kind of took off. I did want to start off with a little bit of back, a little bit of a backstory to kind of like bring Run it. people up to where, you know, how we started off and how we got to this place. So um, I attended it. all for both summer sessions before my freshman year began in the fall. And during the second session, I became an athletic trainer. You were already a trainer. So, yeah, I think you was already a trainer. So, I mean, yeah, I was already a trainer. When I came aboard and we all spent a lot of time in the training room, you know, for practices and game days. And one thing I remember most about you from our time together at college was just like the random conversations we'd have, you know, when we was hanging out in the training room and the random things you say. And it's crazy because, you know, we recently discussed one of the random things that you said in the past and I still laugh at it to this day. So I expect the whole tone of this conversation to be just like that. Very random. But as we've already very. seen, you're also very witty, smart, and sarcastic, all of which I enjoy. So I I'm yeah. looking forward to everything um, that this conversation is going to have for us. And all also the stuff that I know is just going to come from out of nowhere. So with all of that said, um, let's get into some of the topics. You're my Facebook friend, and you see a lot of the relationship stuff that I post about. And you, yes, ma'am. Not a lot, but you chime in like from time to time on different times. I do. I guess we had a time to see fit. And so, with all that said, what do you think about the way that relationships are going these days? You already mentioned to us that you are in a relationship. You have been in a relationship yes, for years. Now, what do you think about the way relationships are going these days? I don't. I don't. I don't think they're going the way they should. The reason why is because they got all of these uh, things that's like being implemented. Let me start over because the fire truck. They got all <laughs> these things that's like outsiders of, and people are looking up out to other people's relationships and trying to make their relationship like others, mm -hmm. which it doesn't. It doesn't work like that because. Every two people that get together can't be like somebody else. And one of those things, like one of those topics that like the provider thing mm. that people be talking about, like I think they have the wrong perception of it because when, before women could work, they didn't, you know, when they didn't want women to work, the the man made sure that they had a house. They made sure that they had water, clothes, food, heat in the in the uh, winter time and AC in the summer. They made sure the kids went to school, and they made sure <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It mm -hmm. was like that was providing. Now that's not providing. Providing now is Birkin bags, stuff like that, which is not in the mix. That's not providing. That's extracurricular activities. Yeah. Some people can't involve themselves in extracurricular activities. So you can't really call a man a bum because he can't afford something like that. But he can provide you with a house to live in every day without paying rent with groceries, AC, water, lights. He can provide you with all of that. He can't provide you with extracurricular. So anything you can get extracurricular out of a relationship is 
a plus. It's a plus, but they looking at it as no. In order for us to have this relationship, I need this this nice this car. I need this bag. I need these trips, and then we can have a relationship. Mm-hmm. That's not a provider to me. That's not like my grandfather raised five kids. He worked. He he retired from one job. He built the house itself. He built a, a, a barbershop and a beauty salon in the backyard so my grandmother could make her extra money on because she wasn't working. He built his own by itself, by hand. He built a barbershop, half barbershop, half beauty salon. Got Sent my grandmother to school. Got her in there. She had her own clients and everything. And when he got off from work every day, he went in the barbershop and cut hair. Mm. He wasn't buying all of this fancy ass shit, though. But he provided for all five of his kids and his wife. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? These people don't understand what the provider really is there for. Not for that. Not for all this extracurricular stuff. Because yeah. that's only for people that's in that tax bracket. Those things are not made. Those things are not made for regular everyday blue collar workers. Like myself, I'm like, I'm about to go to work right now. Mm -hmm. And got called out at the last minute because I'm trying to provide. Right. Trying to be a provider. Not that type. The type that makes sure all the bills paid at the house. The type that makes sure if everything's taken care of. All the extracurricular stuff, that's extra. Not saying I don't do extra stuff, but that's not required. It's not required. It's extra. And they don't see that. They they look at it wrong, man. Like that you made a comment about a man don't want to marry uh or get a woman that already have a house. Uh I might I might be misquoting it. Mm, no, right. that's what it was. The dude was like, um, for real providers, you know, they essentially got to have some some to provide. And it's like, if a woman already got a house, what is that for him to provide? And I'm like, a house with Another you? house. <laughs> that's not like, what you mean? Another house. Another and I'm like, house. Well, she already yeah. got a house. And he's like, you know, nowadays, people are real like go-getters. There's a lot of women that have like multiple properties, especially all this Airbnb not- real estate. And he was like, but she already got all these properties. What she need me for? I'm like, if a woman is in the business of houses and real estate and you offer her another free house, why would she not value that? Why would she not take it? The house she's living in right now, she's going to put it on the market. She's going to rent it out. She's going to make it an Airbnb. But I feel like and this what, kind of... And what was my comment? What was my response to that comment? <laughs> you said it was... <laughs> I said, get your house. Yeah. And then when that time come, you can move in with him. And keep that house, rent it out, sell it, whatever. You would think, but see, that makes sense to me. But in that discussion, just be they have a smart provider. Uh, yeah. And, and they got some they got somebody, people, they just got some other people. Out there. <laughs> because if you really smart, why would you even look at it like that? Because that's your ego. Yeah. You gotta put that aside. It don't matter. Like I said, I, I don't well, I didn't say it on air, but I never been embarrassed a day in my life. Never. Because I, the ego thing is not me. Mm-hmm. It's not me. I don't need to prove myself to be better than you, better than this person. Better. No. All I need to do is make sure I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. Fuck all the other shit. If I meet a woman that have a house already, she's paying her mortgage on it, continue paying it on, paying on it. You can move in with me. Now you don't have to pay Light bill, water bill, anything. Just pay your mortgage, rent it out. That'll even take over the mortgage. And eventually, you don't have to pay nothing on it no more. Now you got that. We end up having kids. Now you got something to leave to your kids. Mm -hmm. And if we go ahead on and buy another one, you have another kid. Now you don't even have to fuss about no splitting nothing up if anything happens to us. They're not thinking about that. They're thinking... They're thinking about the ego. They could throw that ego in the trash. 
I'm so glad you said that because, and that's why I feel like people find your tribe. I'll be like, man, stop out is arguing because when certain men express certain things that just let you know what kind of men they are, because there are different kinds of men and different kinds of women. And you just need to be self-aware enough to know what kind that you want. And so, you know, oh, he said that, I don't agree with that, so I'm going to keep it moving. And I, I just feel like that's insane. If I have my own and that scares you away, you already ain't my type. Because that, that just don't make no sense to me. And, and um, one guy was like, if a woman already has that, there's no, nothing like exciting about it. She won't be excited or I guess appreciative if he comes along to do it for her. And I'm like, that's crazy to me because it's like, so what if I had three houses before now? This is my first house, house with you. If you the man that I've decided to be, spend my life with, to build a future with, if you the man that I love, I've never done these things with you. So I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to that. And that's enough. What, what did you want me to do prior to you coming along? Especially when they claim that like men are not financially at a certain place to do certain things until a later age. So that means you ain't in a position to do it for a woman. So we looking for these things to be done. We, we looking to have these things later in life. Right. If men ain't getting there today, 30s and early 40s, and that means we're going to be in our 30s and early 40s waiting for it. I'm not going to be homeless for three decades <laughs> trying to wait for you to get it. Don't make sense. That's crazy to me. To be like, oh, you already got it. So what you need me for? I'm alone in here. That's why I need you. <laughs> I don't want to be alone up in here. You need somebody to sit karaoke with. What? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I need somebody to sing karaoke with. So right. I, I hear you those think I'm going to sit up in here and drink my wine by myself no, every night no. for 30 years? Oh, I want to look over there and see you playing a game. Right. I don't it's... even play that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's... even play the game. I don't know. It's just not my thing. But Whatever I do go fishing. Doing. I go fishing. Whatever they doing. I would then I would yeah. look over and see you coming through the door talking about how much you done caught today. It's like that simple. And and I think it's crazy. I don't know. Maybe I feel that. Like from a man perspective, this whole idea, like, oh, women got these things, they replace men. I'm not denying that some women do that. Oh, I got all this stuff. I don't I don't need a man. But I'll tell you what. That's some of them because they probably hurt. They might mm -hmm. be. They might they might not even be hurt. They probably they, they might just be they might be living their life like that because of what they seen happen to somebody else. They might not even be hurt. They might have seen something happen to somebody else and be like, you know what? She, I got all this. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. I don't even want that in my life. So, mm -hmm. man, look, they got right. ways. They got ways to heal any kind of wound. <laughs> you can fix it. Yes, you can, and that's crazy. You can fix it. That leads me. You just got to work for what you want. Yeah, and it, it, it's like the tangibles and the intangibles, and so I just I don't understand in this world of like what people talk about the economy because we talked about like what providing looked like back in the day with your grandfather built with his own hands and what he built for your grandmother, right? And so yeah. people talk about now, like the economy is not like that. One income is not sufficient. You need both people working. So I'm like, okay, well, then if you got women out here working and they doing well, I would look at that as that's how much more they got to bring to what you have. I wouldn't look at that as an intimidation. I'm not saying that some women don't hit men upside the head. Well, I got this much. Why you ain't got this much? I'm sure there are women like that. But I feel like there is an ex exaggeration of how many women are actually like that. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Going off of what you just said. Say you was in a relationship to where you was making the most money, right? Mm -hmm. And and the guy was making less, but he still took care of all the bills and everything that he was supposed to be doing as a provider. Your money is basically going straight into your savings account or to your bank account, right? So mm -hmm. when it's time for when it's time for y'all to go like, hey baby, let's go on vacation. You got it? Yeah, we got it. It's still our money. I feel like all it that is, it is, it is, it mm -hmm. is. But it's like most of most of his money is gone for the whole year because he's taking care of everything, and all you're doing is might buy this a little here, probably buying crazy stuff like candles and shit. But <laughs> we <laughs> we ain't even gonna get. That's what y'all like, you know, like candles and shit, and, and buying little like we just gonna change the curtains for no reason. Like they perfectly fine. 
but we need to change them and get rid of them. I don't like them. I've seen them for three months already. Mm -hmm. You're probably doing stuff like that. But like, okay, so he's really helping you save money because you're not really spending all your money. You he's he's spending all of his. So at that time, he's like, oh, you're already going on vacation. You're gonna step in and be like, like you say, you say this, we we got it, it's our money. Everybody don't look at it like that. No, they look at it like with well, shit. You need to uh take care of that too. They're like, whoa. I'm broke. I spend my money every month on uh, everything's gone. And I feel like that's messed up, but I also feel like people need they do need to do their due diligence to try to understand people's attitudes towards that stuff. I think people spend too much time early in relationships kissing and giggling and hunching and carrying on. You need to be asking some questions. You need to be throwing some scenarios out there, and you're still not really going to know, I guess, until you get in those situations. And see how I play out. But if you you if you know you've been doing that all this time, like as a man, if y'all been pooling y'all money together, because first of all, I feel like you need to be doing that. Okay. Cap. Huh? Cap. Cap. Why you say that? I don't. I don't. I don't agree in a joint account. Tell me you can't have your separate. How how is it cap? Okay. How is it cap? Let's let's start with that. Cause you, you said you, you think you think you said you think I'm capping by saying it. No, 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 no. Just I think that's like a uh, that I don't I don't believe that people. I think it's a lie that people need to put their money together. I don't think it's true. They gotta put all of it together, but it's like. I mean, how else? To me, that's the best way. Well, I have my philosophies on what finances need to look like among couples, so I'm probably speaking from my... So, no, you ain't got to put it all together, but but either way, so let, let's say we're talking about it from what you're talking about. Let's say we keep our money separate. You got your account, I got my account, but you providing from your account, so your account probably got less money than mine is, right? So, what you're saying, when vacation come along, you got less money, I got more money, Common sense would say, I need to take care of vacation, but if a woman's coming from an angle, you provide it, you need to provide it all in this vacation time, you still need to provide that based on what you got. That's what you're saying? Yeah. I'm saying that's wrong. I feel like either she should take care of it or their money should be pooled in such a way where it's like, we're not looking at my dollar, your dollar. It's just like, this how many dollars we can afford to go on a vacation we have and afford to pay for everything. That well, I, I can see that because like you're just putting it into... Like, whatever you got extra, just throw it over here. Then at the end of the time when you're ready to do something. But I'm talking about, like, that joint account where you got my you got a debit card for it and I got one for it. And that's what we do everything out of. And all our money going to that account together. Mm, nah, I probably I, wouldn't do that. I don't agree. I, I know a lot of people do it. A lot of people I work with do it. And they always having issues with that. I would only always. do that for bills. I, uh, I just send other, that's um, why they got that's why they got zell <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you could just send a zell like all the bills mm -hmm. send a zell like and you always send a tip so like i don't actually pay like the bills at the house as far as like um light bill water bill and gas i don't physically pay them she do but I send her the money. Mm -hmm. So she'll tell me what it, what the total is for the month. I send her the money and a tip. Might get you something to lunch or something like that. Extra. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to actually, it's not no burden on me, like sending the money and nothing like that. So I just, it's just there. Here you go. Boop, it's there. I can do it at work. It's there. It's 2021. You just be like, doo -doo -doo -doo. there you go. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's just how I do it now. I, I, I Just me in my long term. I got a bills account. Then I got this checking account. Then I got my other savings. And then I have my credit cards and all that. kind. So I don't know. But however people distribute it, either way, it's like, I think it would be selfish if, if both of y'all work and both of y'all collecting a check and you expect him to provide every need out of his check and then you just keep yours for what? I feel like as a couple, both of y'all should determine like what money needs to go where and who it comes from. And that's based on people Whatever. I ain't saying the most that'll come from the man. Cause some people be like, the man pay the big bills, one pay the small bills, whatever that look like. I just feel like whatever work. All I'm big going. to me. <laughs> well, whatever <laughs> it is, I think people need to figure it out. But I wouldn't in, in the case of the vacation thing, I, I don't think 
I wouldn't be tripping about paying for the vacation. Cause like I say, wherever it is, the money, as long as it's between my money, your money, our money, whatever, if we can afford to go on a vacation, we just go. Whether we swipe my card or your card, we can afford to go. We ain't going to be out of the right. house and home to go. To me, that's all that matters personally. Right. But that leads me to my next thing is like, what do you feel like is the most pointless debate and argument <laughs> that people are having nowadays about relationships? That probably was just one of them, that provider <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let me think. Another one. Oh, um, I don't know. I think that's the really big debate right now. Is everybody talking about that? I don't know why because it don't make sense. You just they're looking at they're looking at they're looking at these people on TV. These people are superstars and shit. Like they was already rich before they got on TV. Mm-hmm. So they could do all of that. You're actually watching uh, uh, entertainment. Yes. You're not watching real reality. That's what you I want think. real. You want that's real that's reality. Don't trickle down to us. You want real reality? Just go take your camera and record <laughs> what's going on at Walmart, <laughs> and then follow that, follow that husband and wife home to their house with their kids, and then record them once yeah. they get home from Walmart. Then you're gonna see. <laughs> Shut your goddamn ass down. <laughs> That's <laughs> reality TV. Just take the camera see. home. For holidays, yeah. you got Thanksgiving and Christmas coming Ooh. up. Go, go record yeah. that. Go record that. <laughs> go record that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, think, and then you're gonna be like, well, yeah, this is real, really reality. Yes, that shit there is not. That's entertainment. It really that's is. That's entertainment. Is a lot of it be set up, but they don't look at it like that. No, no like I said, I think they think it, it trickles down because stuff happens on TV, and like you see, like these ball players and these like superstar men getting like divorced and having these kids and having to pay these women like all these crazy amounts of money. They be like, all oh, these women is tricks and gold diggers. It's like, nigga, you ain't never got to worry about that happening in your lifetime. That ain't never going to be your problem. Now you might have child support <laughs> and it, you might feel like it's unfair, but what you seeing and what you trying to judge and talk to us about, it ain't realistic. I think that's where all that rah-rah come from because you got men on women, women after this and that. And we like, nigga, you ain't got no money. Some of them are, but not all of them. Yeah. Some of them are, but not all of them. And it's a lot of like crazy stuff just on like a regular level, like stuff that is happening. Well, I can't speak to, I, well, I do know a few divorce stories, but like child support really does get crazy out here, like on a large scale and like regular everyday people scale scale. It's a lot of like that's the heat of the I'm, day. I'm staying on up out of that thing because I ain't got no kids. I ain't gonna no tell you like child this. support. I I have a I have a daughter and I and um I have a son on the way. Mm-hmm. Congrats. My son's gonna my son's gonna be born um November 16th. Yes, congrats. Congrats on that. So oh. very, very soon, very soon I have to. Mm-hmm. I'm terrified of child support. But I'll stay out of that. Just like you said. <laughs> I'm terrified of it. I'm terrified. Like, really? I don't believe in I don't really believe in the American way of marriage. Mm, a lot of people don't too. That's that's re-emerging. I really don't. And I never did. So people were like, so you don't want to get married? I'm like, I do want to get married. I don't want to get married the American way. Mm-hmm. Because this this union is between me and this person. Why y'all involved? Yeah. Stay out of it. You don't have nothing to do with us. We yeah. already paying you our taxes we got uncle sam like the 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 shittiest uncle in the world <laughs> he showed no sir on on some slick shit he he like a real hodo because he like everybody uncle in the whole world yeah <laughs> he had to be sleeping around a lot <laughs> <laughs> no like, yeah. for real but you know what you're expressing is not um, unusual because I've heard other gentlemen talk about that. But what they say now is like rather than going like through the conventional marriage, you just draw up your own paperwork. You I can guess, do that. Regards to like 
what you just drop your own marital agreement and you can still get it like filed and notarized in places to you get it notarized and everything you're mm -hmm. exactly right you're exactly right so, so but the, the thing about that is finding a per a, a, a partner who is willing to go along with that that's the thing yeah because if you can't if you can't find a partner that's willing to go along with that Y'all be sitting there like the Mexican standoff, just, <laughs> yeah. just looking at each other for years, trying to figure out what y'all going to do. True. Because you can do that exact thing you just said, and you can still have your wedding, your, your big wedding ceremony. You can have your uh, reception and all of that, horse and carriage and all, whatever. You can do all of that and not have the government involved. Yeah, you can. But yeah, people still really hung up on like traditional marriage. It's not like, really traditional because b before before our people came over there, they didn't do that. Yeah. Well, we they don't know do what that. they did. That's I do. I do because mm -hmm. I took a trip. Me and my girl took a trip to Nigeria and we she was actually in a Nigerian wedding. Mm -hmm. And That's we dope. went there and we sat at the wedding, the wedding was at a house. They had this side of the family, the bride and, and the groom side of the family. They sat there and they drink and talk and drink and talk. And they was going through all of these agreements. And then they shook hands once they finally agreed on everything. And it was a wrap. Wow. That was it. And then they just had a reception. So I got firsthand experience. Well, sound like you got who you need, and both of y'all know <laughs> she she don't agree with it though. Oh, oh well, oh dang! But that brings us back to square one. Well, yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, oh shoot, you got it made. Both of y'all have seen how it worked, how it could go. Well, she we both seen how it worked and everything, but that don't she don't agree with it. She don't agree with it because that and like I was asking questions while I was there, I was like like what if it don't work out? And he's like, oh, if it don't work out, you can return. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> he's like, you can return, but whatever, whatever they like exchange, because they do exchange things like uh like uh food and stuff like just goods, they exchange. Mm -hmm. And they just have to provide that back and like give a refund. You give a refund and you exchange back, and that person is back out free. They could marry again mm. the government don't even be involved now so. huh. now that is something i guess we need to dig deep and now everybody's trying to get back in touch with their ancestors and their roots and all that kind of stuff so i guess like there are ways of marriage or union companionship whatever that looked like but you also had like a lot of like multiple partners and stuff going on there too which is not even legal. Now I know a lot of people here that still do that. They just do it off the books. You can only be on the books with one spouse here, but they still have their other people that they may yeah, call, yeah. like this my wife, husband, whatever, even if they not. I don't think I can handle that many uh personalities. <laughs> It'll probably make me go crazy, but I really, me personally, I don't see nothing wrong with that either. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know. Uh, if you look at every other species, except for like a turtle dove or something like that, oh, everybody have <laughs> what? I mean, everybody, oh. every other species of animal, they like they don't stay with one partner. It's like they they move around. Mm hmm. And they'll so have like the men the, and the women are just the men of all these species. Listen, I'm about to explain the men and the women, because the man, he can only handle as many women as he can at one point. So then if somebody else comes along, another male that can dominate him and take over, kicks him out and they take over the whole pride mm -hmm. or the herd or whatever, whatever species of animal it is. They take over. But 
that's just a thing. I don't think I can handle all of this. Too, it's all, it's too much dealing with one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think nothing wrong with if that's what they like and that's what they want to do. More power to you. Yeah, I think that's another one of those emerging arguments right now. Is like the idea of monogamy, and some it, it seems to me. Uh, they talk about, I don't want to use the wrong terms. I don't know if it's like polygamy, polyamory, whatever it is, but having multiple life partners, I just say that. When that discussion comes up, it still seems to be one sided, whereas like that's the only option for the men. And it's still like the women just need to stay put with, I guess, whatever man sees fit to have them, but the men can go out and live whatever life they want. And I just feel like that's unfair and of course they'll be like y'all want to be like men so bad like why you think as complex as women are supposed to be why you think a woman can't handle more than one guy they probably can i think we absolutely can but i think you know it's like scrutinize oh she a hoe oh she this oh she that and it's like why uh, why you think a woman couldn't do this on the way to, she can have a whole husband and on her way to the grocery store to do whatever, make groceries for her home or do whatever her, her daily errands are that she can't stop by getting knocked off by her other dude and still go on back to her routine and have a great day and still come home and cater to her husband. They can. They can. I just think that they get their feelings involved a lot. I'm glad you said that because Again, that's another thing that I, I really believe that people like to say is characteristic of women. And I, I personally, in my experience, have not seen that any less in men getting their feelings involved. They do, too. Mm -hmm. But they, they got a lot of people. They got a, they got a lot of men right now that's going just a different route because they feel like they don't even really need to be in a relationship at all. Mm -hmm. So the route that they're going now, they they're just getting they're just getting escorts. Which is another interesting thing because women is talking like I ain't paying for cat. Yes, you are if you buy an escort. Yes, yes, you are. Well, I'm about to tell you, people who say that, they don't make no sense anyway. You're gonna pay for it one way or the other. You're going to pay for it one way or the other. If you in a relationship with a woman, you ain't never brought out to eat. You never bought her a gift. You never paid for any. You paying for it regardless. So you could go, you could go on like three months going on a date with, with one woman and never get none. How much you didn't spend? You paid for it. You didn't pay for it, no matter what. It wasn't directly, it was an indirect payment. It wasn't like you just said, here, let's go. You still did it. But the difference is, the reason why I said a lot of, like, like a lot of men are going towards these escorts is because they don't have to deal with nothing at all. I'm glad you said that, though, because, again, why is that not looked at on the other side? Because I hear a lot of guys like, well, you know, wise, we can do all this stuff. It's like, uh, OK, we can, too. OK, you know, women, women do it, too, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just saying women do it, too. Instead of having to deal with this person every day, deal because when you end up in your relationship with somebody, you got to deal with all of their problems. Every problem they have anything from uh, from something going on at work to uh i got this pimple on my back and you gotta bust it for me oh my god you gotta dip you know what i'm saying just mm -hmm. that's no that's life yeah it is you gotta deal with every problem when you with this person and when you do it when you deal with that you don't have to deal with that you pay this payment and you don't have to talk to them ever again ever again I'm not saying that's a great life to live, but people are doing it just so they don't have to deal with no, they can live free. Yeah. And I'm asking you something because I'm glad you said that because I agree. And it's like on both sides the stuff women used to be with men for, they don't have to be with them for that no more because we can get those things and the things that men usually had women for, 
like they say, I can do that or I can pay somebody for this. I don't need you either. So I feel like ironically, the fact that we're no longer with each other for these transactions, you would think relationships would be more genuine because I don't need you for the sole purpose of making a living right. I don't need you for a roof over my head and, and a car to get around it. Like, I don't need you to provide my necessities and men don't need women for whatever they needed women for, cook, clean, whatever. Like, we can all do that stuff for ourselves now. We can all take care of that, whether we never uh, uh, find companionship in the opposite sex. Those things are taken care of. So you would think the only reason we're with each other now is for the actual things that, the things that we actually like about each other. I don't need you to buy me a house, but I want you in my house because I like being around you. I like talking to you. I like spending time with you. I don't need you to get me a car. I don't need to pretend to like you to get stuff because I got stuff. I just like you. You would think then, in my opinion, that we would actually be with each other for each other now that, you know, a lot of those things are aside for those of us. It should be like that, but I don't know. It, But I think a lot of the relationships that are holding on strong are like that. Mm-hmm. It's just because you you really like that person, like being around that person. That person entertains you. That person makes you laugh. That person listens to all the uh, bullshit you got to say <laughs> and all the good shit you got to say. Yeah. And vice versa. Y'all uh, compliment each other. Yeah. Hey, that person might like to dance and you might like to dance. So when y'all do go somewhere, y'all dance together. Yeah. It's, it's just it's certain things. That's that's how it is to me because it's like a it's point. it's like per like really it's, it's just like a, a a friendship, a real good friendship, a closer friendship than with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes y'all have sex. <laughs> sometimes that I'm, just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> sometimes well, some, some married people do complain about that, so that might be something else people need to figure out. Oh, see, the longer you're in a relationship, the less you screw. Dang. But that's not nothing exciting to look forward to. Hey, that's just life. It's not even, it's like you got so much going on. Yeah, that's you true. Have, you, you get, like, say people, a lot of people don't want kids and stuff, but if you do, you're in a, you're in a relationship, you got kids. They, in a, they, they taking up all your time. Then, both of y'all working. It just becomes a, a thing like we'll get to it when we have time. <laughs> yeah. If you ever had time, you almost got to schedule it in. And you see it on TV and it's like, dang, that's crazy. You got to schedule a half safe. But it's like, mm, I can see how. Yeah. You, know, you watch all these older sitcoms and they, like, they get to the, they get to the bedroom scene like, all the kids are gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. And then they'll be right there, get ready to get down, and then some, somebody pop in the room. Yes. Mom and daddy. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> that is crazy. So, switch gears a little bit. I know earlier we were talking about like the hair and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But I know you had opinions about <laughs> women with these lashes. Now, what you got to say about that? Because if you're so tolerant and carefree about hair and stuff, what, what you got to say about lashes? How you feel about women and all these lashes? They can leave them at the store. <laughs> you don't, you cannot find, I, I can't find a man. I never ran into a guy that's like, hey, and you see Christian lashes? <laughs> Them bitches banging. They busting, busting. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look at that shit. Mm -mm. They do look at them when you have them. And they don't look at them in a good way. He's like, what the fuck? Especially when the, the bitches be looking like bird wings. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like that. Like, they don't really, they don't care if you got that or not. And then women say they do it for themselves and make themselves look, uh, feel good about themselves. I don't know how. Because the like the people who be wearing them on stage and stuff like that, like singers and stuff, they're on they're performing. 
So if you're on a stage, you have to have everything looking extra. Now when you're working at a gas station or something, <laughs> it's different. You you right up there, uh, look at the Circle K, how may I help you? <laughs> and you got these big old things on. And you're like, full of flapping. And like, just give me a black and mild, would you, please? <laughs> Let me get them out here. <laughs> Because yeah. I, I don't, like, they say, well, what about the individuals? You can barely tell it there. If you can barely tell it there, Why what's the you? point? Yeah. What's the point? <clears throat> Nobody know. Well, women, I, they, I think they do it to compete with each other. They do it to compete with each other because if they're doing that shit to think a man going to say, oh, they look good with these lashes on, they're sadly mistaken. Because <laughs> they don't care at all. They can leave them at the store. They're making these people rich for no reason. Yeah, it's that's one thing as a woman. Do what you want to do. I don't personally wear lashes. The only time I have them on is I'm getting like makeup done for an occasion and they like come with a like package. Like when I was uh in my friend wedding earlier this year, the makeup artist, it just lashes came standard. She just put lashes on us and they were big and they was long, and I feel like I kept seeing them like out of my eye. <laughs> I kept looking up and it kept feeling like something was over me or, you know, kind of like, I guess the brim of a hat, but it was the lashes. And they was like the first thing I took off. I, I can't put them on. So maybe that's why I don't wear them. I just don't fool with lashes. I don't, don't, make, I do it, I don't, I don't fool with lashes. It don't make no sense. I be thinking that, like, I be looking at some people, they look so heavy. I'm like, does that, like, you get cramps in your eyelids and shit, <laughs> like later on in the day? I do like, see from, some. As a lady, they do look kind of pretty. To me, I have seen some that do look pretty, but I do feel like if there was like some cosmetic thing that women could absolutely do without, I would feel like their lashes. I, I really think it just gives dimension to the eyes. And I know guys don't pay attention to that a lot, but I do. Uh, some of them will tell you after a while, you get so used to seeing them with them on that when they take them off, they do look different. And it's like, you might might even put them suckers back out because now you look nah that can never be that drastic of a change because because to me they look like costume mm -hmm. they don't look like they don't look like an enhancement mm -hmm. they look like costume mm -hmm. they look like like you you about to dance with like paula <laughs> abdul and shit uh <laughs> like you're on a set of <laughs> janet jackson videos oh shit. my it's god it's like it's not it's it's a costume mm -hmm. Like it, you're supposed to be used like using this on an on stage production, mm -hmm. like Broadway or something, not just to wear every day or just like oh I got to get these lashes done <laughs> all the time. Like why? Well, it's it does not it does not enhance nothing. It stands out. It stands out. It don't just look like <laughs> <laughs> like you know how people get. People get like you get you get a wig, a weave, or a wig, or whatever. And she's like, okay, we a wig or weave, but this stands out. <laughs> yeah, it like, stands what? out. Yeah, it's, it got so bad to the point that like, like girls start putting them bitches on their car. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Now, that was funny. They put them on the little headlights. <laughs> I, I certainly don't understand that, but I guess it's I uh, think this is the same reason. It's just for the look. It's just. <laughs> Yeah, they I got, on a car light on headlights. <laughs> they got caught. They got last. They, they they look just like they caught. They get out. They caught. <laughs> look like a Sentra. <laughs> that yeah. is crazy. The lashes have gotten a lot of pushback over time, and it's it's. I don't, I don't, I don't mess with them. But if that's what you want to do, I'm still not gonna knock you. I just don't feel necessary. Yeah, I don't feel it's necessary. Well, you I don't. Different. I don't even. I don't even think makeup necessary. I like it because I feel like it's an art. I will do say that because it's like, but I will say to an extent, I, I do understand the deception of it because some people completely transform. I'm gonna tell you like this: my philosophy when it comes to hair, makeup, all this stuff, I feel like. I indulge in all those things, right? Because I want to. But I feel like you got to understand what's real. What I personally don't like to see as a woman 
is when women get like a new wig or a new weave or something like that. And they'll be like, yes, I'm back to myself. No, that's not yourself. What's yourself is natural. What's right. your is like what's underneath. So I'm all for taking good care of my hair. My hair underneath needs to look as good as this. Right. I feel like, okay, I'm not going to put more attention into this than I am putting to what comes in un, onto my actual scalp. And I would not be ashamed to show a man my hair. And I feel like a man needs to see what I look like without makeup. I'm just all natural. I feel like you need to look good without makeup, without weeds, and without clothes. That's just my personal philosophy. Just like, also, I feel like if you're going to um, put all that effort and money and energy into all these outside things you need to make sure what's underneath and within looks just as good so so you're not deceiving people because we see these before and afters and it's like Whoa. you are a totally different person different I would person be yeah. pissed if i was a man i would be so pissed if i had to lay down with some of what i saw when women wash this stuff off it's like give me a fair chance i need to know right you a whole different person but i have to respect the artistry of what people are able to do with these tools like this makeup stuff with that it's, it's artistry but i do understand yeah, yeah. That there's a line of deception for sure because i feel like men like your kids are not going to have these features that you painted on okay right so i feel like people need to know what they're getting because what you look like in pictures what you make yourself up to be in your um maternity shoots and stuff like that that ain't what your kids gonna look like these chiseled cheekbones and uh how people change the shape of their eyes you ain't gonna know who the baby resemble because they ain't never seen who you actually look like you get out so i am a personal believer in that my man gonna know exactly what he getting i feel like he needs to know that and if he all right with that don't say nothing to me about no weeds and we even make them because you know what the real is and so it's no deception beyond that point and so once you know what that and you satisfied with that then you know i'm gonna do all this if you can't flat twist to help me take down no you know braids and i know how to do all that if men if you know how to do all that holler at me if you don't know how to do, do all, that, all that i don't want to hear <laughs> man look i i, I scratch scalp i do the uh <laughs> i grease scalp mm -hmm. i part it twist it mm -hmm. just gotta watch tv I do all of that. If you can detangle and all that stuff, me and yeah, 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 I but can do all of that. But for my mama men, taught me how to do that. I used to set my mama hair and everything, roller set. Ah, oh, but you almost, almost did. You did say you almost went to school for that. So yeah, men she, like that. My, my grandmother was a beautician, so I just okay. picked up barbering and beautician at the same time. That's why I didn't trust nobody to cut my hair at all. Oh, I went five yeah. years, five years without a haircut. So that all makes sense. So look, guys yeah. like that, if y'all had that type of insight and know how, we can talk about it. But you know what? I find myself getting less of that rah-rah from the guy. Men don't want this, blah, blah, blah. A lot of men that grow their hair out, and like I say, because all of us are natural, a lot of us have the same type of hair underneath. A lot of men that tend right. to grow their hair out, once they understand what it's like dealing with their own hair, when they be trying to need to get their hair twist and be having to do a sponge and having to deal with their own curl pattern, trying to achieve a look, them be the I don't hear as much from them when it comes to like wigs and weaves because they know what it's like dealing with their own head and trying to sit down and get it done and trying to find somebody to twist it and make it look right. And they probably grew their hair out like an inch or two. So I found in my personal experience, those type of guys tend to be less, they don't even care because they already know what you're dealing with now. So I feel like guys like that, like I told you, like, I ain't gonna sit here and argue with the masses. I'm just gonna find my tribe. They tend to be my tribe. Understand? Yeah. When I wear these wigs and makeup, it's not to deceive you, but it's just for me. I like the artistry of makeup. It's not to hide nothing from you. It's not to deceive me. And I would take all this off and you can see what's, what's real. And then with these wigs, man, look, I ain't gonna be putting heat on my hair and damaging the hair that I love to achieve a look like this. I'm just gonna put it on my head. I wanna keep my hair, my curls popping, the way they naturally are because I love it. So I'm not going to be subjecting it to all this heat and stretching and all this kind of stuff that can do with damage. I just throw a wig on it. So if man can't be okay with that. I know he ain't my type because a lot of them, they don't care nothing about it. They be like, baby, you left your wig in the car. Uh, <laughs> I just be saying, go get your hat. <laughs> but that's the thing. I don't buy them. Mm -hmm. I don't buy them. Like if you want them, you can get them on your own. I I'm not going to tell you you can't wear it, 
I'm not going to treat you no different because you wear it. I just don't want to put the money in these people's pocket for no reason. Yeah. And I feel like that's completely respectable. I feel like if my husband tell me he providing everything else in our lives, of course, I'm going to pay for my, he got to pay for my weed. I'm going to pay for that. I'll be glad. Put your hat on. Put your hat on. <laughs> so even no though, it. in addition with the lashes and stuff, we also was talking about, uh, you had mentioned um, the idea of getting flown out. Which I yeah, think is a, what we call a flued out. I think the city flued out. out. That's what they flued call out, it. Flued, flued out. out. I know it, it just that what they say. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get flued out. I'm mm -hmm. like, mm. what? What? The reason why I mentioned that because I, me personally, I look at it as, do you? I think a person shouldn't want to get flown out. They should be want to want to. They want to be flown with. Mm -hmm. It's a difference because. I'm about to pay for your plane ticket for you to fly out here. You know what I'm expecting? Most of the times you don't even know these people. But I'm expecting you to come here. We about to smash. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm your ass going right back home. But if I fly with you somewhere, that's totally different. We about to fly somewhere. We about to go here. We about to go sightseeing. We about to go drink a little bit. My party. And it's a whole experience because we're together. Mm -hmm. You're not just flying. I'm not about to just fly you so fly you to me and then fly you back. What's the point? I feel like it's uh because a lot of a lot of the things that they the way they be talking, like I'm not about to no money. I ain't about to do this without getting no money. So you're an escort too, if that's how you feel. <laughs> But I don't think some people have a problem with that. Because, again, it's kind of like what we're talking about having a deal. I ain't, I ain't got to deal with you. Pay me my money. Buy my plane ticket. Couple my travel expenses. I do the job and you send me back. If that's what they about. That's what they about. I just was trying to put out the difference. Because I think if you're looking for a, a real life a partner or something like that, you'd rather get flown with mm -hmm. than flown out. I agree. Because I could send you a ticket and you fly to me and then you fly back. I don't have to deal with you no more. I could actually block your number. True. And block you on all social media. True. It definitely seems way more impersonal. So if you did, if you did feel like you had a connection with me once you got here and were like, oh man, I can't wait to see him again. I didn't Yeah. I didn't block everything that you any kind of way you contacted me. Yeah. It flew out. Not, that definitely seems more transactional. Yeah, than, like a than, it's like a transaction. Then getting flown with, like I said, it's like a lot more going to y'all more so in it together. I follow you on that. Okay, so I I know it's been a little time and um I knew I had things to do, so I am gonna try to like you know get us on to a, a stopping point. But I do have a a thing I want to incorporate. Now, because I, I had my first like single male listener, my single first single male guest last for the last segment, right? And he yeah. introduced something that I kind of want to keep going. So he asked me a question for the male listeners, right? And I know with me doing a lot of like the writing and the talking um, with my own individual videos, I'm talking about things largely from my perspective. And I try to be well-rounded, stuff like that. But I mean, it's, I'm still a woman, a single woman as you know, stuff is going to be biased. So from the male perspective, is there a question that you want to ask me that you might be in the end, that might be in the interest of the male listeners that you want me to answer? I ain't worried about them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I really, I don't have no questions for them because I think everybody questions should be individual when it comes to, nah, I really don't. I don't have a question about like that. I need you to answer for somebody else. Okay. Or even just not even for like the masses of men. But I guess like as a guy, if you was like wanted like a woman's opinion, like why do women do that? Or what you think about this? Like from a woman's side, do you have a question like that, that I could answer as a woman to a man that I probably wouldn't even think of just in my regular little day to day life. Cause it just would never cross my, come across my radar.
Why y'all take so long in the bathroom? <laughs> Uh, um, well, I that's a mighty good question. I don't well, I, I, I do take long in the restaurant. So for me, it's a process, okay? And I really do be thinking I'll be going fast. And my friends are gonna listen to that. <laughs> listen to this and be like, you definitely take long in everything you do. And even guys will be like, Man, I used to have to wait on her. I don't be thinking I'd be taking long. Sometimes I would try to like get an early start on stuff. And I really don't know where the time goes. Even my mom talk about it. She's like, you really like, I know you got up an hour early. I heard your alarm go, go off. I heard you get up and move. And you still ended up late. I don't know. I really don't know where the time goes. Even when I think I'm moving faster. But I know I'm the type of person. I have a lot of steps to things. And I feel like things need to go in a certain order. So maybe just my perception of time. I think a lot of my radars are off. So maybe my time radar is off. If I think I'm moving fast, I'm probably still going slowly. And I also say my radar, as far as like light skin and dark skin, is off too. Because people that I consider light skin, they be like, they ain't like they brown. I'm like, they look light to me. And I be like, well, what well, am I? Huh? Am I light skin or dark skin? From what I last remember seeing to you, I thought you were light skin. Oh, all right, yeah, you probably got it right because that what everybody else tell me. Yeah, I I feel like you're light skin, and I tell people like y'all light and I'm dark, and they're like you ain't dark skin, you brown skin. I'm like, well, I consider brown skin to be a subset of dark skin. Right. So I don't know. So I, I think that's just one of them things. I don't know what women be thinking about what they be doing, but I know for me, I'm probably one of them people that thinks they're going fast. And you really just be going slow or you make up the Could you hurry up, please? You make up additional things to do. Because I'm like, well, I My got time. My sister is the worst. <laughs> yeah, you probably think, oh, I got time to do this. So I'm going to pluck my eyebrows. I'm going to wash my face. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to take a oh, second be, and it don't. Be a bunch of maintenance. Yeah, that's what I think. I can't speak on behalf of other women. Maybe they'll chime in and, and you know, say what they do. Nah, my sister was the worst, man. She'd be in that thing for like three, four hours. Ooh, I don't think I've been there that long. If I we know people are waiting. Man. If I, I know people are waiting. I she don't care. She don't care. I try to care. I try to care. So, another thing from college days. Do you remember... Those YouTube videos, some of those YouTube videos that was like popular at the time when we used to be in the training room. I'm going to see. Yeah. I, I got three of them listed here. And I'm going to see mm -hmm. if you remember. If, if, if you can remember any of the ones, if, if you don't remember the actual video. And actually, we just got tagged in one recently. So that's a hint to us. One, but also this <laughs> one guy we used to listen to. He was kind of popular at that time. His videos was. And I like what YouTube videos do you remember from that time? Because I have a list of them right here, and I wonder if, if you gonna remember them. It was that I used to list. I used to mess around with that uh, Rack and Willie dude, and he's like Rack up, Rack up, Rack up. I don't feel like I remember that one. The fried or fertilized video. Yes, yes, I have that one on my list. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Man, you gotta ask Chastity about Rackham. Cause we was we used to laugh at that shit so mm -hmm. much. We even made like a little slick side fake fraternity. Oh Lord. So yeah. do you remember this? What? Oh, I know you remember this guy, 50 Tyson. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I do remember 50 Tyson. We used to watch all his little videos and yeah. um, and it, uh, so I can remember if this if this is a video you had um we, we all watched together. If it was somebody heard from one of my little old friends, the video it's so cold in the deep. Oh, that was me. That was me. Mm -hmm. How the hell are we supposed to keep peace <laughs> when it's all on a nigga mind? Mm -hmm. Working and doing time. Yep. Yeah, that shit was funny as hell. Yep. My outfit was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember that as like a privilege. She was hood around the day. <laughs> and another thing that I had from that time, I actually have a picture when I um, upload this um, episode. I'm going to share the picture so people can see it. I think I'm pretty sure it's a picture of me sleep in the back of your truck after we went to the Q Dog party after their probate in 2011. Yeah. You but you drove one? us home. I drove us home? Yeah. 
<laughs> it look, it had to been after my nap then, because I definitely maybe I slept on the way there. I think I do remember driving. No, you slept. You slept on the way there. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> I definitely yeah. have a picture. Yeah, we probably, yeah, we probably have been drinking and carrying on. I think I do. Remember. Yeah, because we was we was drinking before we left. I still got that truck too. <laughs> really? Because it was a black, yeah. like what avalanche? Avalanche. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I still got it. <laughs> I definitely yeah. have a picture. Sleep in the back of that truck. So good times. Good times. It was fun. It, it was. Fun. was. I'll never forget that day. All just all them escapades in the training room, all the jokes, all everything. <laughs> we ain't gotta get into that, but we recall something and somebody get their feelings hurt. But it was a good day. <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> I ain't about to go there. Uh-uh, me either. We gonna leave it at that. So I mean, this has been fun and I do wanna thank you for being my guest, for being on. I was glad. No to problem. Be Next, yeah. I'll, I'll do it again if you want me to and next time hopefully I could be in a setting so I can have better lighting and not in a vehicle yeah I, it's but, whatever I thought this was amazing I really enjoyed this episode I really love pretty much everything you had to say and hope I think everybody else will too so it's like whatever I don't care if you was in a park in a grocery store I'm just glad to have you on. It felt like a reunion of sorts, especially since we both missed homecoming. This yeah, crazy. man, I was hurt. Yeah, but at least we beat Grambling, so everything is still right in the world. So I don't know if there's anything else you want listeners to know, anything you want us to support that you have going on, or just where to follow you. Not yet. Mm -hmm. But... I've been locked out of Instagram for like five months. I can't even recover my password, oh. but I don't care. I ain't even sweating. I'm not going to make a new one until mm -hmm. I start my business page. But I am coming out with my own fishing gear. Oh, so that's dope. It's a clothing line. A lot of black people don't have their own fishing line. They always buy stuff like Columbia and Magellan and all of that. So I got my own. It's called Hold Your Mouth Right. Mm -hmm. they'll be coming out soon i'll let everybody know once everything drops but it's all legit right now so nobody can't steal it oh, but good. it's an old thing it's an old thing that all the older guys in the neighborhood i grew up with they used to go fishing and they'll say they'll ask if you caught anything or whatever i mean you catch like i ain't catch nothing today it's like you what you're not holding your mouth right <laughs> <laughs> like if you hold your mouth right you're gonna catch something so yeah. i'm working on that right now and now I'll launch it. When I launch it, I'll, I'll come back on the show and let everybody know. Yes, please. Because I know quite a few people that go fishing. Even my nieces, as young as they are. So make sure you have some little kid t-shirts. They they love They got the shirts, man. They all dry fit. So when you get, if you get wet or whatever, they'll dry off quick. They made mm -hmm. to get mud and all of it. Yes, dope. that'll be dope. I know a lot of uh, black guys that fish, they love it. And in fact, I probably, we could do a giveaway um on the show have people do like a raffle or something i'll support yeah i definitely want to see that because i i can't think of any like black owned outdoors like or fishing lines like that. It's probably some now that i'm saying they probably had to go google it but i don't care they probably they do. probably do but they don't have many they don't have many but right i'm trying to make it happen oh yes well it's definitely room for that a market for that so yes as soon as you get that ready to launch definitely hit me up we will have you back on um because like i said i know for sure people i can think of specifically that are my friends and on my timeline that are black men that go fishing faithfully so i would love to see that come out and i would love to put that um out so they can see it and support it yeah yes ma'am i appreciate you yeah no I problem i appreciate that Yes, nice so. talking to you too because like you said we haven't seen each other in years yeah and i usually i usually go to the yard every year but i haven't mm -hmm. made it yet so I, hopefully i can get there one time yeah i was kind of scared to go too because i could have snuck down there and shot back but because i'm only like two two and a half hours away mm -hmm. but the crowd was so thick yeah yeah, I, a lot of people, they got, they, I don't know, I guess they, I don't know what they got going on, but I, it was just a little too thick for me. I'm still a little nervous. I know COVID is getting out yeah. the way, maybe with this vaccine, all that stuff, but I'm just like, nah, I ain't fooling with that. I'm not scared of it. I just, uh, I just try to stay, 
stay aw- stay away because if I be around all those people, my girl don't want to let me come back home. <laughs> yeah, I know some people like that too. It was like, mm-hmm. like that. nope. Yeah, you gotta go get tested. Yes, yes. So I sure. try to stay away from that. For sure. And plus, you got a new little baby coming in. You already got a small kid, so it's like you know, you yeah, you know, just gotta be careful out here. I I totally yes. understand. That. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I'm going to wrap up by shouting out the team that made Degree Single possible. So shout out to myself that make all my productions possible and Jervis McGee's music. <laughs> Jervis McGee for the music. Um, check him out. Stream his music on all platforms. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Degree Single on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And visit DegreeSingle.com for additional content and merchandise. I will look for you in the comment section. I just want to right now. now. Nothing else matters right now. 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 Can I get you by yourself somehow? How? And show you how I really get down. I just wanna show you where I live, baby.